So it's that time of the month where I give you my favourite metal albums. April was jam-packed of great releases, and here are my top 10 metal albums of April 2024. Let me know your favourites in the comments section below, and let's start with number 10. In early April, Manchester based band Ingester dropped their latest album, the title Death and Track to Dreams, via Metal Blade Records, taking me by surprise with its impressive sound. The album's reduction stood out for its clarity and cleanliness, perfectly complementing the overall atmosphere, packed with heavy, chuggy riffs, monstrous breakdowns, and captivating guitar licks. The album kept me hooked from start to finish. Paragon of Purity kickstarts the album on a high note, leading into the intense Endless Machine with its rapid fire guitar riffs. Jason Evans' vocals shine, transitioning effortlessly from fierce growls to angelic cleans in tracks like A Path Once Lost. Lynn Jeff's drumming stands out for its power and precision, enhanced by the crisp production quality, particularly noticeable when using headphones. The album's musical style blends elements of death called progressive death metal slam and brutal death metal, offering a diverse and engaging listening experience. While some tracks may lean towards simplicity, the intricate guitar work and killer riffs elevate the album's appeal. Kingdoms of Sand delivers energy, while Path Once Lost showcases the band's versatility and willingness to experiment. And I am falling faster with you This body lies broken in two The tide of death and fractured dreams impressed me with creative album cover added to the experience. Despite potential criticism from purists regarding the album's ending, I found it to be a satisfying conclusion to a standout record that showcases Ingester's musical prowess and creativity. Coming at number 90's Forte Kama has unveiled their highly anticipated sophomore album, Vibermarkt, following the success of the debut, Die Lieder Predict, released on April 19th via Central Media Records. The album maintains this band's signature symphonic operatic black metal style while introducing a slightly heavier sound that piqued my interest. Led by an exceptional Andromeda and Narakia, those mesmerizing vocals blend opera and black metal streaks. Vibermark offers a captivating journey filled with unbound garden progressive elements. The album showcases Folded Karma's creativity and musical prowess, seamlessly integrating opera with blast beats to push the genre boundaries. Folded Karma excels in incorporating symphonic elements, top-notch production, and technical passages that highlight Andromeda's vocal range, particularly evident tracks like Die Uta Verfung. Thunderous drums, searing guitarist, intricate tremolo picking create a dynamic backdrop for the album's rich sound. Standout tracks like Anno Domina immediately immerse listeners in the fusion of opera and black metal. While the opera segments may not resonate with all listeners, the excellence of the black metal components is undeniable. Pretty sure on, on Discovery I gave this score I gave this an 85%. Vibermark presents a compelling musical experience, sparking the battle whether it surpasses its predecessor. Imminence's The Black, released on April 12th through Nuclear Blast, showcases a unique blend of metalcore progressive and a bit of black metal elements that defy traditional genre conventions. The album features hard-hitting breakdowns, tight guitar riffs, and gent-inspired moments that deliver the expected intensity in the metalcore realm. Imminence's incorporation of classical instruments like piano and violin add a distinctive touch reminiscent of experimental sounds from bands like Nea Blascaris. The album seamlessly combines aggressive black metal vocals with melodic metal core cleans creating dynamic contrast that enriches the tracks. Standout pieces like the eponymous track The Black highlighting, highlight the band's versatility, blending intricate piano and violin melodies with powerful breakdowns. With darker, doom-laden atmospheres in tracks like Come How or High Water, electronic elements add a modern twist to the mix, Eminence's ability to shift between genres within metalcore showcases their musical creativity and prowess 
I'm pretty sure I also gave this on Discovery an 85%, and it's a standout album of the year for metalcore enthusiasts seeking fresh and groundbreaking sounds. Balor, the French atmospheric black metal band, returns after a three year hiatus with their latest album, Eastern Tales. It was released on April 5th through Northern Silence Productions. This monumental release follows their previous album, Artifact, and marks a significant chapter in Balor's musical journey. Known for their ability to create immersive and epic black metal landscapes, Balor skillfully incorporates synths to build atmospheric depths and narrate tales of Thralis with a conceptual depth. Eastern Tales showcases rich guitar arrangements and intensified atmospheric elements surpassing their previous works. The album seamlessly transitions between aggressive tones, thunderous percussion, and intense vocals that effortlessly shift into clean operatic, you know, operatic tones evoking a sense of grandeur and majesty. Fans of summoning Caledon Brood and Moonsoro find Eastern Tales to be a captivating musical adventure. The fusion of beautiful string arrangements with the raw power of black metal takes listeners on a thrilling sonic journey through Balor's imaginative world. Tracks like Sons of the Sun, The Hermit Awakens, and Battle of Thralis highlight the band's intensity and musical prowess, culminating in the epic conclusion with The Rise of a Savaran. My initial lukewarm reception of My Dying Bride's album, Immortal Binding, transformed into a deep appreciation upon closer examination. The album's gradual allure akin to a slow burn revealed hidden depths that pleasantly surprised me, ultimately surpassing its predecessor, The Ghost of Orion. You got songs like Thornwick Him and The Second of Three Bows praised for their for the vocal performance and intricate musical tapestry. Tracks like An Unthrown Cream and The Apocalyptus noted for the atmospheric depth and emotive qualities enriching the album's texture. Despite initial reservations, songs like A Starving Heart gradually captivated with repeated listens, showcasing the band's signature sound effectively. The album's conclusion, We've Crushed Embers, evoked poignant emotions, though it may have lacked the captivating essence of other tracks. I, like I said, I still think that Crushed Embers shouldn't have ended off the album. Though multiple listens, the album's beauty and depth became increasingly apparent, leading to a positive... That, that, I need to collect. Blaze Up Edition's album, A Parson, released on April 19th by Metal Blade Records, marked a highly anticipated return for devoted fans after a four-year gap since their previous release. The album delves into themes of misanthropy and nihilism, captivating listeners with its powerful vocals, thunderous drumming, and intricate guitar melodies that create a vivid sonic landscape. The production quality strikes a balance between raw and aggression and refined clarity, maintaining the album's organic essence. Each track showcases the band's expertise in songwriting, blending elements of melodic, progressive, and black and death metal seamlessly. Notably, tracks like Architect stands out with its haunting guitar leads that enhance the eerie atmosphere of the album. Closing track, A 9 Minute Marvel, encapsulates Blaze of Edition's sound with an infectious orchestral guitar melody and a gripping solo, providing a thrilling way to end off the album. A pass in his praise as a masterful creation that de delivers immersive and intense listening experience, leaving a lasting impact on me. Necro, the US death metal band made a highly anticipated comeback after four years with their latest album Lifeless Birth and was released on April 12th through Tank Crimes. The album harkens back to the classic old school death metal sound featuring infectious hooks, melodic choruses and a brutal edge that leaves a lasting impact. The standout element of the album is exceptional guitar work showcasing killer death metal riffs and soaring solos that elevate the intensity of the music. Necrot's unique and creative approach to death metal shines through in the lifeless birth with innovative ideas and stellar drumming contributing to the album's dark and heavy atmosphere. 
The monstrous vocals deliver ferocity and fucking power, particularly evident tracks like Cut the Cord, Kazoom, Cut the Cord, with its blend of melodic tones and raw aggression. Songs like Lifeless Births, Drill the Skull, Dun 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 Drill the Skull. And Dead Memories display strong riffs and solid songwriting, reminiscent of classic death metal anthems. The production style of the album maintains a raw and gritty feel, while ensuring clarity for each instrument, enhancing the overall musical atmosphere. Lifeless Birth offers an enjoyable and adrenaline pumping experience from start to finish, cap capturing the essence of old school death metal with a modern twist. And holy shit, it smashed that however out of Deicide's brand new album. Austere's album Beneath the Threshold, released on April 5th through Lupus Lounge, emerged as a captivating discovery on my musical journey, immersing me in its melancholic ambience and haunting melodies. The Australian band's black metal artistry shines through the album featuring exquisite guitar, thunderous drums, and intricate fills and blast beats, and raw emotive vocals that convey both ferocity and pain. The album's sound encompasses elements of atmospheric black metal, hints of black gaze and post, offering a diverse and engrossing listening experience that transcends conventional genre boundaries. Beneath the Threshold stands out for its fusion of styles and progressive elements are woven throughout the record, exemplified in tracks like The Sunset of Life with its shimmering melodies and entrancing rhythms that transport listeners to a melancholic yet mesmerizing realm. The closing track of Severance leaves a lasting impact with its emotional depth and powerful delivery, serving as a poignant conclusion to the musical journey. Austere's stellar record swiftly became the standout favourite of the month for me, showcasing the musical craftsmanship and ability to evoke profound emotions through the intricate compositions. Labour Rifted Stellar Rooms, album Vortex of the Worlds, released on April 6, presents a cosmic masterpiece that reshaped my perspective on music for the month. The album's atmospheric blend transports listeners to unexplored cosmic realms enriched by captivating electronic accents that enhance the band's cosmic black metal sound. The Ukrainian band excels in creating an immersive experience with eerie melodies intricately woven with keyboards and dynamic drumming that elevates the musical music's epic nature. Tracks like Transcendence showcases exceptional synth work, entrancing listeners with hypnotic melodies that linger long after the music ends. Melodic hooks embedded in the album, particularly in the title track's conclusion, leave a lasting impact on the listener. The seamless transition between ethereal cosmic atmospheres and powerful hard-hitting moments demonstrate the band's versatility and skill. The album's top-tier production quality enhances the vast sonic landscape, enveloping listeners in a cosmic embrace that resonates deeply. Vortex of the Worlds is a mesmerizing journey that captivates with its cosmic ambience and artistic depth, making it stand out release in the black metal genre. And now my favorite album of the month. Here's my number one in Festa 6 Studio album, It's Wyong, released on April 19th, Vitalhelm Records has left an indelible mark on me. 
captivating with its eerie atmosphere and progressive black metal sound, the album showcases a unique blend of haunting guitars, contrasting vocals, and thunderous drums that create a mesmerizing sonic landscape. Infesta seamlessly integrates progressive elements, introducing unconventional time signatures and transitions between aggressive black metal and jazzy interludes, demonstrating versatility and creativity. An exceptional aspect of the album is the incorporation of violins and piano, adding depth and emotion to the music. Andras, the mastermind behind Infestus, displays a diverse range of influences, infusing black metal roots with elements of reminiscence of bands like Shining. Tracks like Dead Inside and Fuga Nocturna stand out for their infectious riffs, intricate compositions, and complex arrangements that keep listeners engaged. Investor's music transcends traditional black metal boundaries, encompassing avant-garde elements and doom-laden moments that challenge genre conventions. Each track on the album reveals new layers and nuances upon repeated listens, showcasing exceptional artistry and captivating soundscapes. This album solidifies its place as a standout release of the year, inviting me and inviting you to embark on a musical journey filled with depth and creativity. So yeah, that's it. Let me know your favourite albums down below. And if you find yourself coming back and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. There's a few videos here and over here. It's been fun and I will see you in the next one.